Welcome back everyone. As most of you know by now, the Samsung Galaxy Note 20s were released like a couple months ago, but why talk about those when we can talk about a phone like the Samsung Galaxy Note 4? Now this device came out in 2014 and I still remember watching reviews of this phone when it first came out, like back in 2014. And I was thinking to myself at that time, like if you picked up this phone, like how much better can phones get? Like you would be set for the rest of your life basically because this phone had everything that you would ever want at a phone at the time. But obviously things have changed. But still, when I pick up this phone, there are a humongous amount of reasons why this phone is still so timeless in so many different ways. Now, I'm not going to link any No 4s in the description because honestly, I don't think anybody should be using it as their main device. But I'll probably link like a Note 10, an S10, and some other phones like that. So you can get them down in the description below and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now, the front of the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 with that 5.7 inch Super AMOLED display, 1440p panel, this was seriously and still is a really really good panel at the end of the day now it's not perfect it doesn't have 120 hertz it doesn't have a fingerprint sensor in the display no whole punch display or anything like that but the quality of the panel is still a really good phone when you consider that this thing is you know over whatever it is seven years old or whatever it is like that's a crazy good panel now you do have that fingerprint sensor under the display capacitive keys next to it you know the samsung logo on the front samsung had to do it at that time on us and i think at the end of the day this is a very very good panel like i said it's not really comparable to something like a Samsung Galaxy Note 20 or Note 21 or whatever, but it's still a really good panel, and I love this phone because of that. And on the bottom, you have the micro USB port, which is so funny to see, a headphone jack, and the S Pen. Still have the S Pen on this device, which is great, which is just a stylus with a way more capability than a stylus. And on the back, you had that plastic back, which is great, and it was removable. This is the difference with the S21. I mean, it's a plastic back. It's not removable. With this device, it's actually a removable back. And you have access to basically every single thing on this device. You have access to the battery. You can go ahead and take out this battery and put in another battery if you want. The micro SD card slot on this device is there. You can go ahead and expand the storage if you want. And those are such strong assets to have on a device like this, like I stated. Yeah, it's cool to have like a bigger size battery and, you know, whatever, have a glass back. But... I think the capability behind this was that you can go ahead and just, you know, take out the battery, replace it, put a bigger battery in there. I mean, the, the possibilities were endless. And one of the biggest problems we have nowadays with just phones in general is battery degradation. Once our battery hits a certain percentage in degradation, like we have to go and get a new phone. But with this one, we could just replace the battery super easily. Like anybody could do it. And sadly, no phones really do it anymore. But that was a really big advantage for this device. And one reason why I literally love this phone so much. So in terms of that, you also have the single camera set up on the back. Now, there was no IP certification, no wireless charging as far as I know. Maybe there was for some models, like how there was for the Samsung Galaxy S4. But I still think this device is, you know, just overall just aura of this phone was crazy. And I really do like it at the end of the day. So in terms of the overall outside of this device, it gets a thumbs up for me in my books for sure. Now, the camera wise, I'll go ahead and hit on the camera right now because we're right there. The Samsung Galaxy Note 4 had a single 16 megapixel pixel sensor on the back and this is what I'll tell you okay at that time when this phone first came out it definitely maybe wasn't like the perfect camera like I think in this day and age it isn't like the perfect camera right now you know it doesn't have multiple sensors it looks a little weird and I'm pretty sure a lot of no fours had a lot of dust built into that camera making it maybe not so good of a camera but at that time in 2014 when this phone came out it was probably one of the best cameras of any phone of any genre ever I mean this phone could do 4k at 30 back in 2014 I mean that is a really good resolution to film in I mean you're pretty much future proof because if you think about it even the pixel 4 that came out in 2019 19 or whatever it was that could also only do 4k 30 on the back now take that as you will but that is a really good resolution i personally would not want to use you know a samsung galaxy no force camera anymore but the fact that it had that capability at that time is super impressive iphones didn't even get 4k at 30 until the iphone success which came out a year later so this phone was already kind of ahead of the times in that opinion so the camera i mean you still have a lot of features built in which is kind of funny you have a 3.7 megapixel front facing camera i don't know why it's 3.7 where you could do 1440p videos in and that's really all you had i mean there were a lot of features built in like i said right now it's probably not the best camera ever but at that time when this phone first came out it was probably a very solid camera to pick up at the end of the day so 
for sure what I can tell you is the Samsung Galaxy Note Force camera was good at the time. It's not really good anymore, but I appreciate what it brought at that time. So in terms of that, that pretty much covers it up. Now, one of the more interesting aspects of the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 was actually what I tried doing it with it in 2020. So what happened was, was that I was kind of in this mode where I was just custom ROMing pretty much all the phones that I had at that time. I custom ROMed like a Galaxy S3, an S4, I think, an S5, an S6. And then I tried to custom ROM my Samsung Galaxy Note 4. And what happened was, was that the specific model that I had, and it's such a rookie mistake, I ended up flashing the specific software or the specific, you know, thing through Odin where I flashed the wrong model number for this one. Like I had a Sprint model or something, and then I flashed the Verizon one. It happens all the time. So that ended up happening and it broke my Samsung Galaxy Note 4, my other one. So I had still had another one, but I was very sad because I wanted to throw some custom ROMs on it. But this is probably one of the best assets for the Note 4. Even though I screwed up when I custom ROMed it, you still have the custom ROM capability on this phone. And that is another humongous thing about this device. I don't think the Note 5 has it. I think that's when they kind of stopped doing it or whatever happened with the boot loader but this device has that capability so even though this thing stopped at android marshmallow we still had more and more features when it came down to the software and the custom software i am pretty sure once android 11 starts actually coming out to a lot more devices if there isn't already we are probably going to be getting an android 11 you know custom rom on the samsung galaxy note 4 and as i stated before this is extremely awesome having that type of capability on this type of device is insane now like i said i really i mean the hardware is kind of iffy typically it's the opposite it's like the software is horrible on samsung devices but the hardware is great on this device it's kind of like the opposite the hardware is definitely dated but the software if you custom rom it can be you know modified to you know one of the more recent versions of android and that is one of the strongest and one of the best things about the samsung galaxy Note 4 in 2021 now i wouldn't recommend getting like a us cellular version or some really random like phone version i would recommend getting like you know a verizon note 4 or an at&t or t-mobile whatever one of these more popular note 4s because there's a lot more community behind those devices and i would definitely tell you at the end of the day this is one of the best advantages for the samsung galaxy you know for it's actually custom roming it now the stock software is completely outdated i would not recommend anyone using it but custom roming it and upgrading it that way there's some really good advantages for it so in terms of that that pretty much covers that segment up now ending it off with the performance the samsung galaxy note 4 had that qualcomm snapdragon 805 chipset with three gigabytes of ram now what i can tell you about this device is, is that the performance really isn't going to be that good of a performing phone anymore there's a lot of glitchiness there's a lot of you know stutteriness and if you keep it on a stock rom if you keep it on a custom ROM it's a little bit different but if you have it on a stock ROM you're going to be rocking like Samsung's TouchWiz or whatever it was at the time and it really wasn't that good of an experience I mean they rebranded it since then but it's really not that great of a you know software if you're having it stock and there's just a bunch of like moving pieces there's like a bunch of bloatware and it's just like a messy experience overall now it's not horrible it's not going to you know make you just upset or anything but it can be a little bit of a deterrence from you from having better performance if you had stock software it would make the phone perform better now if you're doing like day-to-day -day tasks like basic tasks you will probably be okay you if you're doing phone calls and messages and stuff like that you're going to be okay but the biggest problem you're going to have with the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 when it comes down to that performance segment is going to be the lack of apps that are still getting support from the App Store. Right now, we're on Android 11. In a couple of months, Android 12 beta is going to come out. This phone is going to be severely outdated on stock software. So all the apps that you would have normally used, like, you know, Google Docs or whatever the case is, since you're on a super outdated version of software, you won't even be able to use those certain apps. It's like, you know, installing, you know, like the Temple Run on the first version of Android. It's not really going to work out that well or installing tiktok on this device there may be some versions you may have to download a super old version of you know tiktok to even get it installed on here so that's kind of the problem that you're running into and it always comes down to the software version if you're on a super outdated version of software you're really not going to be able to do too much so that's another reason why i would recommend custom roming your samsung galaxy note 4 so you can actually go ahead and utilize more of that hardware and software mixture so i think at the end of the day again the performance is really not that great it was great at the time when it first came out for like a year or two but right now it's really not that 
it good. And this is probably one of the weirder aspects of the Note 4 for sure. So in terms of that, that pretty much covers it up. Now to kind of sum up this video and to answer the question, is the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 worth it in 2021 and or should you still buy it? Now there's really only one reason why I would recommend buying the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 right now, and that is pretty much the custom ROMs. If you plan on buying the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 for any other reason, I would highly recommend staying away from it. It's not going to be that good of an experience. It's going to be pretty outdated and there's really not a whole lot going for it, but there still are some really cool aspects about this device that make it a solid competitor in 2021. I mean, the display for it still being 1440p for having that high of a pixels per inch density, that is seriously something that's really awesome. And that's something you don't see in a lot of other devices. So again, that in and of itself is another asset for this device. You're also getting, like I said, the S Pen, which is another cool thing. The headphone jack, which is another cool thing. I mean, the biggest thing about this thing is the custom ROM capability, but even when you flip it to the back, that removable back with that battery capability that you can go ahead and remove, you can put in a bigger battery, whatever you want to do. The micro SD card slot with expandable storage. I mean, dude, this is like a dream come true. If Samsung were to make a phone this year, with this type of capability with you know like the note 20 ultra with this type of mixture it would be insane i mean my dream phone is a note 20 ultra with stock software from google with the removable back and all that good stuff like if samsung or some other manufacturer were to make a phone like that that would honestly be my perfect phone if you can sprinkle some like ios features in there too i mean it's like a perfect phone i don't see anybody why anybody would want to upgrade from there but the samsung galaxy note 4 in 2021 i would highly recommend everyone staying away from it unless you kind of want a custom ROM, but then it's like kind of worth it but even then it's still not even worth it to be honest so like i said before i'll link a note 20 and s10 and some other devices that i'll find links will be down in the description you can get that from there and help support the channel at the same time but that's really pretty much it if you guys have any other questions or anything like that let me know in the comment section below hit the like button that would mean so much but definitely hit that subscribe button every single subscriber that we get really does count so it means so much if you guys could hit that also check out the other links down in the description as well my twitter my instagram my other channels more importantly than everything else i love every single one of you guys hopefully i'll catch you guys in the next video peace out till then